This recording is a preview of the selections from Kenneth Burke's Rhetoric of Motives that we're using in the demagoguery class. So the PDF that you print off for yourself will look like that. Um, this is the book I took it from, Kenneth Burke, The Rhetoric of Motives. He refers to a previous book he wrote called Grammar of Motives and um, is thinking ahead to another book he didn't end up writing called The Symbolic of Motives or A Symbolic of Motives in the selections for our class. And that is confusing, but when he has um, grammar in, <clears throat> excuse me, italics or rhetoric in italics or symbolic in italics, those are the three books, Rhetoric of Motives being the current book that he's talking about and what he wants that book to do. Um, there are three sections in the PDF, so pay attention to the page numbers. Um, there's one that's in pages in the 20s and then one pages in the 50s and then um, just a couple of pages in the 70s, so they're taken from three different sections of this book. Um, one reason why I, I got a lot from um, this part two of the book, Traditional Principles of Rhetoric, there it goes, is because Kenneth Burke does a decent job of giving readers a rundown of major, major um, uh, rhetoricians, um, you know, rhetorical theorists, um, including Cicero, who wrote De Oratore, um, Quintilian, uh, Institutio Oratoria, um, so they were Romans. Um, St. Augustine, who was, I don't know if we consider him a classical rhetorician, but um, a major, major Christian rhetorician. And of course, Aristotle. Um, and he refers a lot to Aristotle's On Rhetoric, um, which is kind of, well, in my graduate department at least, it was kind of the Bible of rhetoric. Everyone had to read it. Um, that's the analogy. Um, unlike the Bible, it's incredibly boring, very dry. You can get a sense of the way that Aristotle divides up different theories of rhetoric into like, rhetoric is made of three parts. Um, and there are this many kinds of rhetorical appeals. There are this many kinds of general topics you can use for any discussion. Um, so Burke gives you a pretty good taste of that. Um, I should say why I wanted us to read some Burke. Um, I know that he was a big influence on Robert Miller's thinking, especially about identification. And on page 72 of Fanatical Schemes, she begins that chapter with an epigraph um, that's about identification. So on page 72, um, this is chapter three about alarmism, conspiracy, and unification. Unification being a, a an important idea when thinking about identification between a rhetor and his or her audience. So the epigraph from Kenneth Burke says, and often we must think of rhetoric not in terms of some one particular address, like one speech, one text, but as a general body of identifications that owe their convincingness much more to trivial repetition and dull daily reinforcement than to exceptional rhetorical skill. And that is from um, one of the pages I didn't give you on the PDF, but that's from uh, Kenneth Burke's Rhetoric of Motives. So um, identification is one of the most important concepts that I want you to get out of the Rhetoric of Motives selections. Um, it's, identification is an important concept related to demagoguery since um, you know leading the people being perceived as one of the people, or at least the end group, is so crucial to a demagogue's um, power. Also, um, there's a part at the end of the selections that I've given you that's about formal qualities of language. It's about rhetorical figures, <clears throat> excuse me, if you know what those are. If you don't know what rhetorical figures are, just look up the Wikipedia page or you know Google it, go to your favorite um, source of information. That'll give you um, a better schema in which to put that those last few pages, the PDFs, um, because formal, um, 
very deliberate arranged and pleasing arrangement of language um, that constitutes re uh, rhetorical figures can be such an attractive part of uh, the way demagogue communicates in slogans, in um, pattern and kind of call and response. Um, and I think it's really interesting the way that Burke talks about those and how the audience participates with the rhetor in finishing out these slogans and these um, patterns of speech so that there might be an extra persuasive potential if a speaker um, uses these rhetorical figures to their advantage. Um, we can think of, if you're familiar with the, um, and going back to Aristotle, the rhetorical terms ethos, pathos, and logos, which probably most of you are familiar with. Um, you don't need to be for this class if you're not already, but if you're familiar with the concept of ethos, which is the way that uh, rhetor persuades just through their identity, whether that's um, there's something born with it or they develop some quality, then using their identity, constructed or sincere, um, is like how Burke says identification works, that you signal to your audience that you are like them, you are identified together in some way. There's part of you, parts of your identity that are the same. And like Roberts Miller argued, um, has argued so much, that identification um, becomes one of the most important stases for um, persuasion in authoritarian, um, authoritarian uh, contexts. So look for identification. Um, there is a tricky uh, term that appears in the middle section called dialectic and that has a couple different meanings you might have encountered before. Keep reading. Um, in the next couple of pages Burke will give you some some pretty easy to understand explanations of what he means by dialect dialectic and what Aristotle meant by dialectic and how it's used in opposition to what um, rhetoric is. So this this bundle of readings is really good um, if you're new to rhetorical theory because it's kind of a greatest hits. Um, it explains more, much more about what rhetoric means. Um, but the the uh, contributions that Burke really makes to the conversation that's relevant for our class anyway is his concept of identification, which is something that he's identified with um, quite often in uh, modern um, academic rhetorical theory. So I'm going to release the reading questions, which should guide your reading and um, make a discussion board uh, prompt that will hopefully lead you more to analysis and application rather than um, what the reading questions are, are more meant to do, which is uh, make sure you got the content that I wanted. So I think that's all I feel like I need to say about the Burke reading. Um, you'll notice from the schedule reading a lot more Burke, um, especially, uh, and some Hitler um, in the next week or so. So um, these are this is starting with Burke easing you into his writing style, which I think is actually easier to read than Robert Miller's. Um, but we'll do more Burke in the week ahead. So let me know if you have questions, and uh, happy reading.